Would you like to spawn into every game of Cold War Zombies with a purple rarity weapon? If yes, then today's video is for you. Hello there, my name is Justin from Day Night, and today we're going to be walking you through the Firebase Z Easter Egg. This video is the sequel to a series that we started by doing the D Machina Easter Egg a couple weeks back. We did that video without expecting it to have any form of viewership counts, and the viewership figures did indeed blow our expectations out of the water. So today we present to you the sequel to the series, and we'll see how it goes, and if we're going to keep on doing these Easter Egg type videos. For the first round, you're just going to be killing zombies in this spawn area, and then you're going to be taking that first door up to the teleporter to make yourself to the actual fire base, and I'm going to speed it up for you here in just a moment. Arriving at the fire base, you're essentially just going to be killing zombies in this main hub area, uh, saving up points to turn on the ether reactors. There are going to be three ether reactors around the map, each of them containing a perk, so there's one by Stamina, one by Speed Cola, and one by Juggernaut. Once you've activated all the ether reactors and killed zombies next to them, uh, via the way the Garad Krovi used to work, then you're going to come back to the main hub area with Ravenov. I'm actually just going to speed it up until we do the first one, so you can get that one in the full view, and then I'm going to speed up the rest of the two. So I'll see you here in a minute. As mentioned earlier, after you activate the reactor, you see a charge and a damage meter. The charge bar is going to fill by zombies dying in this area, and the damage meter, it means that the zombies are doing damage to the reactors. At this low of a round, you probably won't have to worry about the damage figures, as it's going to go by so quickly, and you'll take so little zombies to activate the reactors. Uh, basically, the zombies are going to come in, you're just going to melee them to maximize your damage, and then once the charge is at full, There'll be a little, like, explosion. After that, we're going to pick up a shovel on the outside, and then we're just going to make our way to the next reactor. With that implosion, it's going to signal that it is done. We're just going to head outside. You can hop up here if you'd like. Go to this first little hut area, and on your right-hand side is going to be a shovel. We're going to use that later on when we're digging up the ether crystals later on the Easter egg. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you're just going to start heading around the map to the rest of the ether crystals. I'm just going to speed up the rest of this segment um, quite a bit, because it's the exact same thing as the first sequence. You just turn on the reactors and kill zombies. And if you want, you can go prone in front of the perk machines as well to get some extra points. But yeah, I'm going to speed it up real quick until we get done with the third one. As mentioned earlier, once we're done with the third ether reactor, you're going to follow my uh, my path thing here for the fastest route. You're just going to head back to the teleporter and go back and talk to Ravanov. My pathing here is a bit excessive, as I was contemplating what I'm going to do next. Not from an e strike standpoint, but from a uh, awareness standpoint of getting prepared. But the next step here is going to be going back to our first reactor room, the room with stamina up, and we're going to be going to go talk to Peck. It's a little excessive at the beginning of the Easter egg. It's kind of like dialogue missions from ESO. It's just kind of talking to Ravanov, talking to Peck, talking to Ravanov, talking to Peck. <laughs> back and forth, but yes, we're going to go talk to Peck right now. Like I mentioned earlier, after you talk to Peck, the next step is going to be talking to Ravanov. However, if you wanted to, you could do a couple of steps right now for building the Ray K. The Ray K is the one up of the map. It's like an AK-47 mixed with a ray gun, and you need it for a few steps as well as it makes the boss fight quite easier. 
You can earn it through a couple ways, like doing trials or getting it through the mystery box, but the most consistent route, and the route that I take on all zombies maps that I do, because I think doing all the side easter eggs is fun, is building it. So the first step is going to be grabbing the blueprints you find right there, and then you're going to head out to the dunesy area, and you're going to extract the key, so to speak. You'll, you'll see what I mean here in a minute. John, I don't know where the community guideline stands on this, so let's just cut it out here. Once you received the key and the zombie was dealt with during that cutscene, you're just gonna head back to the uh, little armor stand room after the second reactor. It's on this little side pathing area if you follow my directions here. If you activate or interact with the computer with your newly acquired key, it'll then uh, prompt you to get a set of keys for some lockers. Opening the lockers will prompt uh, mimics to spawn in, and after killing one of the RNG-related mimics, it'll drop you, I believe, the barrel for the Ray K. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. Once you kill the lucky mimic that gives you the barrel, rifle, whatever for the Ray K, then you're gonna go back and talk to Ravanov. At this point in time, if you talk with Ravanov and you stay within that area, the zombies will avoid you, so you can use this as an opportunity to do the bunny easter egg for this map. It's similar to the, the disco or the coffin easter egg from D Machina, but there's a couple of extra steps attached to it, so I'll come back here in a minute. So essentially, after you talk to Ravenov, the zombies will avoid you, then you're just going to head up the stairs, ADS, and stare at the bunny. You're going to stare at it excessively long for a little bit until it flies at you and teleports you to a little pocket dimension where you have a chance to get some extra loot and salvage, as well as a free Juggernaut reward. Once teleported into the pocket dimension, you need to run at the ether bunnies and shoot the crap out of them until they vanish. This will happen three times, then on the third successive one, all the zombies and the mimics will despawn, and then you could just have to locate the loot chest and grab your rewards. I always make sure I look to the right of the chest when I open it, because that's always where Juggernaut falls, and this is a timed event. So I want to make sure that I'm able to get my free perk at least. Once teleported back out of the Dark Aether, you're going to head over and talk to Ravanov. He's going to give you the key card or a badge. The round may have flipped while you were gone, depending on how many zombies are left in the round. Essentially, you're just going to slide the key card on all these cabinets and grab one of the materials that they're going to mix for the Truth Serum. There are three locations for this. The first one you noticed was right there. The second one is going to be in the uh, this left side of the room there. And the third one's going to be down the hallway. You just follow my pathing and you'll get there. Okay. Once you have all three of the compounds, you need to mix them all together, so following my path thing, you're going to go mix them. Uh, once you start the initial mixing process, it's going to spawn in a couple of fiery hellhounds. Once they're all dispatched, you can finish the mixing process and grab the machine. Once you grab the machine, you need to hook it up to the air duct or the little AC or whatever, the ventilation system above Peck's office. And then that will uh, send the truth serum into Peck. And it'll have some dialogue that he needs to go through before you're able to interact with him again. Once you interact with Peck after he's done talking about Martha and dancing around in the purple mist, 
Uh, you can then head over to the data center to collect the Pokeballs, I mean the capture device for Firebase Z, um, and then you'll be able to start gathering your mimics. This is easily the most annoying Easter egg step amongst every single Easter egg on Black Ops Cold War. Essentially, you need to capture three specific mimics from three areas of the maps. There's one in this area we're passing by right now, one in the spawn, and one outside of the Juggernaut reactor. However, this is not consistent. Sometimes you will gather mimics from these specific areas, and it will be the wrong mimics. Basically, you need to capture them in the Pokeball by weakening them enough to throw the Pokeball down, and then you take it back to the data center, and if it's one of the three specific names, I believe it's like Sokolov, uh, Zabin, and Brahms, or Sokolov, someone in Brahms, uh, then you will be able to collect them. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't always happen that way, so yeah, have fun with that. Another step you could be doing right now is the dartboard step. Interacting with this uh, computer guy where we got the key from is going to tell you where to shoot on the dartboard in the spawn room. So you see the lower right white, the lower uh, upper right black, and then the lower right white. And you're going to go back to the spawn room and then shoot the dartboard with those three consecutive spots on the dartboard and then hit a bullseye. There is going to be a magnum pistol outside of the spawn room that is wonderful for this. You can throw a blueprint on it with a scope and make yourself super accurate. By shooting those three spots and then the bullseye, it'll open it up to reveal a Ray K piece. Now with all of our Ray K pieces that we can collect until we interact with a mangler for the first time, we can head back to the data center to begin the very, very annoying Mimic Pokeball step. Unlocking this cabinet will allow you to grab the Pokeballs and begin the most annoying Easter egg step in all of Cold War Zombies. Essentially, you're gonna be running through these three areas. This is the first one. If you notice any salvage, kill streaks, or anything on the ground, that is your indicator that the Mimic is in this spawn location. The next spot, if you run through this hallway here, it could be anywhere from the right here onwards to the staircase. It could also be up the staircase to your right or to your left. If it's not, it could be down this hallway or out on the outside to your right, or it could be in the spawn room next uh, above where Ravenov's office is. As mentioned earlier, you're just going to weaken the Mimic enough, uh, you're going to throw down the Pokeball and capture him into it. You can also shoot the Mimic while he's going into the Pokeball if he's not quite weak enough. You just want to make him as weak as you can without actually killing the Mimic, and then you can pick up the Pokeball and take it back to the Transfer Center. Once you have all three uh, names successfully inputted into the, uh, the trap here, then you will be able to proceed with the next step. As you can see, Markin is actually an incorrect name. I need, uh, I believe, Sokolov, Zabin, or Brahms are the correct names. So once you do that for three mimics and get all three correct names, the next step can be proceeded with a floppy disk at that machine that you need to grab. Once you grab the floppy disk, you're going to take it over to the uh, a machine that is in the room across from where you go to talk to Peck. Um, so I'll meet you there here in a second. Once inserted, you're going to need a way to power the anomaly in the center there. So you're going to go back and talk to Peck, and he's going to tell you that you need to get Ether Crystals. After that, there's going to be some dialogue with Rabinov, who's going to tell you the codes for a locker near Peck. After that, you're going to get the Ether Meter, and you're going to start your quest to get the three uh, Ether Crystals to power the anomaly. I'll meet you there here in just a second. Once you've grabbed your Ether Meter, the first of the trials we're going to commit to is deciphering uh, which crystal is the Mimic and which one isn't. What I mean by that is you're going to go to this spot right over here, you're going to dig up a crystal. And then a bunch of Mimics of this crystal are going to spawn around. If you check inside of them, you see some have black uh, foggy mist surrounding them. You want to find the beaker that has no black foggy mist. So floating around it is just white. There isn't a single ounce of black. Once you find that, you're going to pick it up. It's actually right here. You see no black foggy mist. Once you pick it up, you're good to go. If you pick up the wrong one, you're going to fail the step. Your next step is going to be a defense step, but to make sure the zombie survives, you're actually able to trap him within the Pokeballs that we used for the Mimic step. If you just hold on to that Magnum that you kept earlier on, you're just going to shoot him until he's weak enough and then trap him within the Pokeball. Then you're going to dig up the Yellow Crystal, which is going to initiate a defense step, which you're just going to run around, avoiding the Hellhounds killing them as much as you can. 
and it's going to spawn in two manglers. On the first mangler, make sure you shoot off his wrist cannon. That is going to drop the, uh, the energy cell that you need for the Ray K. After you're done with that and you've collected it, just make sure you're killing all the dogs and the manglers that spawn in, and once the defense step is done, you'll be able to retrieve that yellow crystal in the center. Once you've retrieved the uh, second crystal there, the third crystal does need the Ray K to complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop off the energy cell at that crafting bench in the same room with the armor stand. We're actually heading there right now. The energy cell needs two rounds to charge, and it doesn't mean full rounds. So if we drop this off at 14 on round 16, you can pick up the battery and then fully build your Ray K. So I'll see you here in two rounds. And again, what's nice as is, is, uh, dropping the battery off in round 14 at the very end is we pretty much only had to flip a single round. Round 16 is beginning right now, so we're going to run over, grab our battery, and then head to the crafting table that is right next to us and build ourselves the Ray K. Then we're pretty much going to be boss fight ready outside of the crystal step, which we're going to head up these stairs right now. The Ray K has two modes. If you toggle on to its second mode, I believe it's up on the D-pad, and then shoot it on the ground in this corner... Then you're going to retrieve the crystal and then grab it. If you don't have the Ray K shot going, the crystal will actually always run away from you. Now we're just going to be getting the rest of the way boss fight ready. The only things I would recommend is getting the Ray K at least to tier 2 pack a punch, having a speed cola for the fast reload, deadshot daiquiri for its, pre its accuracy damage, its precision, I'm not sure exactly, critical hit kill, there we go, critical hit damage, uh, as well as either monkey bombs or the um, the black hole grenade. I forget what it's called. It's like the, the Casimir or something. It was from Ascension in Black Ops 1, but they changed the name in this game. Essentially, you're going to get all those things, and then once you're completed there, we're going to drop off each of those crystals into each of the ether reactors that we started at the beginning of the game. So I'll see you there in just a couple minutes. Now, once you've dropped off all of the uh, crystals into each of the ether reactors, if you go back to the center anomaly, you're going to notice that there's a little bubble there. After a couple of moments, it's going to tell you that the breach has been, like, unstable and it blows up or whatever. Essentially, your next step from here moving forward is to use a control panel to redirect a satellite laser to fuel the station. Once you're activating, I'm going to show you the panel here in a second, but once you activate the panel, it's going to show you a couple of spots on the map. Using your uh, D-pad, you're going to direct the cursor onto each of them. It's going to pull up a bunch of different country flags. You're going to hover over the flag that is a question mark and interact with it. Essentially, that's going to trigger the laser, and from here on forward, you are boss fight golden. After that, you're just going to go back to the anomaly site, interact with one more thing, and then you're going into the boss fight. But I'm going to show you the panel here in just a moment. Here is the panel, and as you can see, it's going to be very, very slow when you're moving it around. And you can only use your D-pad, so you can only move in the four directions. But I'm going to hover over each of the thing, and in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to notice a different flag appears on screen. I'm looking for a white or gray background with a black question mark. That is the flag that we're going for here. It, for us, this game, it's going to be in the upper left-hand corner. As you see, there's the question mark. You hit Acknowledge. And then from there, moving forward, the game takes care of the rest when it comes to the laser. The only thing you have to do is go up to this anomaly up the stairs and wait to be able to interact with this panel on the right-hand side. Once you interact with the OPC, you're going to get the cutscene of Maxis coming out of the portal. A few things for this boss fight. It is the Orda boss fight. So essentially what you're going to do is move in front of the car to your left looking at Orda. You're then going to start firing your Ray K as much as you can without activating Ring of Fire. Once you drop below 10, 7, 5 rounds left in the Ray K, you're going to activate Ring of Fire, still shooting the order and trying to hit as many critical hits as humanly possible. Once you think the Ring of Fire is about to run out, you're going to throw either your uh, Casimir or your Monkey Bombs out in front of you to help keep the zombies off of you while you reload and finish off the rest of Orda's health. It's a pretty straightforward and quick boss fight. Uh, probably one of the easiest boss fights in Cold War, in my opinion. But if you have the strategy down, you can just completely tear through this boss fight. But I am going to show it in its entirety here in a second, as it's pretty quick. So I'll see you guys here in a second once the cutscene is over. 
Spawning into the boss fight, again, moving to the left of the car and shooting Orta as much as we can with our twice upgraded Ray K. Next, when we drop below our 10 rounds, we're going to activate Ring of Fire, still shooting that orange glowing spot in the center to get that mass critical damage with the Deadshot Daiquiri mixed with the Ring of Fire and the Ray K. Shooting zombies if they come over to touch us, mostly just targeting Orta. Now I feel like we're getting pretty low on its Ring of Fire's charge, so I'm going to throw a Casimir in front of me while still shooting the Ray K, so I'll make it reload without having to tap square. It's going to reload by itself. Then we're going to get the rest of the damage done on Orta, and with that, you have beaten the Firebase Z Easter Egg. Thank you so much to everyone who has commented on the D-Machina Easter Egg um, video that we posted. We actually, again, didn't expect it to get any traction at all, but here you guys are either requesting Firebase Z guides or any other guides. It's, it's just been a delight to talk to you guys in the comment section. But with that, um, thank you so much for coming out. If you have any recommendations for future content, future guides, future anything, or whatever you want to see on the channel, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you're new around here, please consider giving that subscribe button, the Omega Fist Fire Thorn Punch, as it is free. It helps us out a ton. A ton, I tell you. And please, 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 please uh, comment any suggestions that you have. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for stopping by today, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the road to getting your purple weapon and Cold War zombies. We'll see you guys next time.